This is the Voice Over Marketing Podcast, episode 26. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Voice Over Marketing Podcast. My name is John Melly, and this is the podcast dedicated to teaching in depth and advanced marketing strategies for people in the voiceover and audio production professions. My goal is to help you make more money by showing you ways to leverage your time, charge more for your talents, and allow you to spend more time doing the things you want to do in your life. Hey there, it's John. How are you? Welcome to this episode. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I really do appreciate it. I am super excited. Uh, yesterday, I found out that uh, this podcast has been nominated for the Outstanding VoiceOver Podcast for the 2014 Voice Arts Awards. And um, the nominations were just announced yesterday on October 8th. Uh, the ceremony is going to be... Uh, it, going to be November 9th in New York City, and I'm making plans to be there. The other nominees for this category are the East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, Sam Hughes, the Sound Architect, and Chuck Duran and Stacey J over at VO Buzz Weekly. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, these are great shows, and this whole thing is so exciting. Um, the Voice Arts Awards, uh, the founder of that is Rudy Gaskins, and I did an interview with Rudy in episode 22, where we talk all about the Voice Arts Awards and how it came to be and why awards shows are important and how they build credibility for every industry. And so if you want to learn more about that, please listen to episode 22. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, you know, this wouldn't have happened if... Folks hadn't been listening to the podcast and the feedback that I'm getting from people from all around the world that they really enjoying the podcast episodes. Uh, we've had, as of this recording, 16,449 downloads of all the different episodes uh, of the voiceover marketing podcast and episode number one just surpassed a thousand downloads in and of its own. It's it's got 1,055 downloads. So thank you very much. I'm really really excited about this. I'm honored about it, uh, and so I'm looking forward to it. This is I've, I've never been part of this before, so it's fun to be part of this process. I just heard this idea on another podcast, and so we're we're all about building a community here. If you could do me a favor. And send me or send the podcast audience a selfie of you listening to the podcast, wherever you're listening to the podcast. Please, if you're driving, do not do this right now. Uh, there's one thing that drives me crazy, no pun intended, is people texting while they're driving. If you're in your car, don't do this now. But if you're in your studio or you get outside your car and you want to take a picture or you're out and about, if you're on a run or if you're a, one of our international listeners, please send us a picture of yourself and share it with us on the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast Facebook page. Or you can tweet it to me on Twitter. And my Twitter handle is at John Melly. That's M-E-L-L-E-Y at John Melly. It's a lot of fun. I've seen other podcasts do that, and it's all part of growing our community here at the Voice Over Marketing Podcast. I just want everyone to know that I try and send a personal message of thanks to everyone who joins. I, I try and ask you how you found out about the podcast, but sometimes I don't have the option of sending a message. But when I try and do it, it says, I'm not connected with you it only happens with some folks. If anyone knows the reason why I'm able to message somebody and not somebody else, is it a privacy setting that they have? If you know the answer to that question, please let me know. I would love to find out why. Oh, my. Just really excited from the news from yesterday. We've kind of got a potpourri today. A lot of different topics, no one set theme, just cover a lot of different things. But a personal story before I, I get too far into this, I, I was, I had a scary experience uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, the lovely Ann and I, my wife Ann and I, we went to a bat mitzvah in New York State. And uh, it's Ann's cousin. And so we traveled from the Boston area down to New York, uh, New York State. It was like uh, Tarrytown, I think, is nearby. Was, and so we were there, and we had never been to one. 
before. So this was an honor for us to go. And it was really quite a moving experience to see this young woman make this uh, commitment and, and go through this ceremony. And it was, it was quite an experience. And the family was very gracious. They, uh, you know, they had a, a large reception at the end of it and they had uh an evening you know then there were the leftovers that were brought over to the hotel that everybody from out of town was staying at and then the next day as if they hadn't had enough of everybody (laughs) i can't imagine you know one of those family events that just kind of maybe you've experienced it or not but you go and it's just kind of like the same group of people in different places eating (laughs) <laughs> I'm not complaining. They were very gracious. and But I can only imagine from their perspective of like, when is this going to be over? <laughs> but they were, they invited people from out of town back to their home the Sunday morning for people to um, have brunch before they went on their way to return home. And they had set up these tables out in the backyard and I was there with Anne and a number of her cousins, and we were seated at this round table. And it was a beautiful morning. The weather was, I mean, crystal clear. You know, the leaves were just starting to change and all that. So it was beautiful. Anyway, they had food. Uh, obviously, it was brunch. And the yellow jackets start to kind of, Yellow jackets are um, a kind of a, for, the, for anybody who doesn't know what a yellow jacket is, like I said, we have listeners from all around the world. So I just I try and paint a picture for everybody here. Bear with me if you know what a yellow jacket is. A yellow jacket's kind of like a bee, a honeybee, but it's not a honeybee. Uh, they look a lot like a bee and they sting like a bee. <laughs> and so, uh, you see where I'm going with this. So, we're sitting there and the yellow jackets, they love sugar. And anytime there's and cut grass too. Anytime you cut the cut the lawn, uh, the the uh, yellow jackets all come out and they're hovering over the freshly cut grass. Anyway, so I had like a fruit salad and I had uh, cream cheese and lox on a bagel. I mean, you know, it was like the perfect thing to have there. So I'm, I'm sitting there eating this thing and this Anne's cousin is sitting next to me to my left and the yellow jackets are kind of hovering around the plates and we're kind of waving them off and going, Shh, get away, get away, get away, that kind of thing. And she's in conversation with Anne and her other cousins around the table. And this yellow jacket lands on her plate and starts climbing around on her thing. Now, she was in conversation, so I didn't want to interrupt her, and I didn't want to be waving my hand over her plate and all that kind of stuff. So I, I, I said to myself, I'm just going to watch that, and as she, if she goes to reach for anything, I'm going to say hey, before she touches the plate, I'll just let her know that there was a yellow jacket on the plate, and she should check her food carefully. So while I'm doing this, I reach down to my plate, and I pick up my bagel, And I bite into it, and this searing pain surges through my mouth. And I I just yelled and went, ah! I was was amazed. I didn't swear. (laughs) But I, I reached in and pulled this yellow jacket out of my mouth, threw it down on the plate, and the little bugger flew off. Somebody said, oh, well, they're going to die. And I said, no, no, no. Those are the honeybees that leave the stingers. The yellow jackets can live to sting another day. That little sucker flew off. And my mouth, now I'm a voice guy. This is my instrument. I was a little freaked out. My mouth just you know, blew up. Uh, I am not allergic. And that was what everybody was asking me. Are you allergic? Are you allergic? I'm like, no. So I'm just sitting there. And Ann's other cousin across the table is looking at me like, are you all right? And I said, well, yeah. She said, does it hurt? I said, well, yeah. It feels like I got punched in the mouth. She says, you're not running around or anything like that. And I said, no, this isn't a situation for me to run around like a banshee and, 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 and scream and yell and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> She's like, you got to you gotta take some Benadryl or you got to take some ibuprofen or something. I said, no, I'm not allergic. So I'm just going to let the body's immune system do its thing. Because uh, the last thing I want to do is suppress the response by taking drugs. I want it to do its thing because it'll heal faster. So they got me some ice and I'm sitting there. I'm icing the live and I'm, I'm feeling, you know, when Bill Cosby did that bit on, uh, you know, the uh, Novocaine and going to the dentist, but because of my fan base, that thing, uh, that's kind of how I felt. 
and we and drove back up. We were going to um, we're actually going to meet Chris Tom, who's a listener of this podcast, a voice talent. He's also a uh, front of house sound guy, and he does the sound for Christopher Cross. He's been on tour with him for quite a while now, and uh, he let me know he was going to be in town. And uh, he got us passes. And so we get to the, the fair, and Ann's saying, how's your day going? And I said, eh, it's okay. And she says, yeah, you, you feel, did it ruin your day? I said, well, no, it didn't ruin my day. I, I kind of, the, the sting in the mouth, it, it kind of put a damper on the day. And she, <laughs> I said, I kind of described it as, it's kind of like having a big rock in your shoe and not being able to just shake it out and get rid of it. It's like you got to walk around, you know, I'm I'm afraid I'm going to bite into my cheek and all that kind of stuff. But I was kind of concerned because, you know, we earn our living with our our mouths. But I was very fortunate that by the by the next morning, it was pretty much over. You know, there were no lingering effects. The swelling had gone down. There really wasn't any kind of pain. You know, I could kind of tell that something had happened there. But uh, really no worse for wear. So I was very fortunate that that was the case. And, and I'm really glad that I didn't, you know, take the quick fix for the ibuprofen or the Benadryl or anything like that. I just let the body do its thing. And, uh, you know, I'm not a doctor or anything like that. But I think if there's, if there's any time we can allow ourselves to just let the body do what it's designed to do without interfering with quote unquote technology and quick fixes that's sometimes the best fix is to let nature take its course so anyway i don't know why i talked about that that last part there but it was just on my mind uh but uh just following up i got a chance to meet uh chris tom at the concert it's at there's this big fair out in western massachusetts called the big e and it stands for the big expo and it's an agricultural fair, and it's got the midway with the stuffed animals, and it's got food vendors of every kind. Uh, you know, if you wanted a fried pickle, or I, I jokingly say, come on down to County Fair and get yourself a fried bloody goat leg. You know, those big turkey legs that people are walking around, and it's just like, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of grossed out by watching people eat those. Anyway. <laughs> but we got to uh, got to meet up with Chris Tom, and uh, he got us passes into the show, and we got to meet Christopher Cross backstage very briefly, got an opportunity to say hi to him and thank him for his music, and then we went and saw the show, and it was great. It was a great show. And then we got in the car, and we continued on our way home to Boston, and so that was that. But it was, a, it was an eventful weekend, and it was great to connect with the different folks that we did. And uh, Chris, if you're listening, thanks again for the passes and the autographed CD from Christopher Cross. It was great. Some other exciting things have happened uh, in late September. If you recall, episode 19 was all about using your personal story in your marketing. If you have not listened to that episode, please do so. It's one of our most popular episodes. And if you downloaded the free marketing piece that I shared with you, the uh, the personal story piece that I use in my marketing, you'll have read that to pay for college, I was a meat cutter. Well, on September 26th, the movie The Equalizer with Denzel Washington was released in theaters nationwide. And I'm happy to be able to disclose to you after 14 months of waiting, because we were kind of under this gag order, that I was cast as an extra in the movie The Equalizer, and Ann and I went to go see it, and I actually made it into the movie, and guess what? I was cast as a meat cutter. There's the scene about an hour and 24 minutes into the movie where he walks into this meat packing facility that's basically a front for a money counting and money laundering scheme and you know there's piles of cash everywhere and there's buckets being of cash being carried around. Anyway, 
I'm in the scene. I come through these swinging doors where I'm pushing this side of beef that's hanging on a hook on a rail. I come through these swinging doors, and Denzel Washington is walking toward me, and I come in and I open and hold the door open for him, basically with this side of beef. And it was kind of cool because we're in the theater, and we went and saw a matinee because there weren't going to be a lot of people there because <laughs> I honestly was thinking – if I if I'm in this thing, it's going to be hard for me to control myself. It's like, hey, look, there I am. You know, I wanted to do that. Uh, so Ann and I were there, but about an hour and twenty four, hour and twenty five minutes into the thing, you don't blink because it happens really quickly. <laughs> but it got me thinking about how much money they spend on making these movies because I know what they paid me, and they had hundreds of extras there, and they had to feed us, and they had all these behind the scenes people working on this movie and this was literally for the amount of time we were working i was there for two days and there's a lot of sitting around as an extra sat around for two days for the amount of time i worked it it, we were working on the scene probably about four hours total over the two days we were getting paid for all that time and for the amount of time that was actually on the screen the whole scene was probably the part that I was in, the the lead up to it and all that kind of stuff, maybe 15, 20 seconds. And literally, I'm in, you could see me for maybe four or five seconds. But the cost was, I I started to think about it. It's just mind boggling. The movie was like number one on the weekend when it was released, highest grossing film of the weekend. It was a real hoot. To see that, you know, and and know you actually made it into the movie. As and and the puns that you can work with are, are crazy. Uh, you know, I, fi- I I made the cut. You know, being a meat cutter, I made the cut. I didn't wind up on the cutting floor. I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> it's terrible, but it was really it was a lot of fun. The reason I talk about episode 19 and the equalizer is this is using your personal story in your marketing in action because I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, SAG-AFTRA, and you know I get these casting notices. And one of the casting notices I got a little over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, was they're looking for extras with meat-cutting experience. Hello? I paid for college by being a meat cutter. So I took a picture and I attached it to the email and they asked what experience I had. I typed it in and you never know how you'll be able to use a past experience in your future and your present. It's part of the whole thing. It's part of my career now. It's something I can use to market my services. And so dig through your story, go through your history, write it out, If you haven't listened to episode 19, go listen to it and download the personal story. It's free. Just send me your email and I'll email you a copy of my marketing piece that I use with new clients and use it. Create your own version of it. So please do that. It's amazing what your experience and how you can bring all your other life experiences to the table and growing your voiceover and production businesses. We've been getting a lot of great feedback. I uh, got a message from John Davenport. So I uh, want to just take a quick break here and play John's message. And uh, then we'll come back. Hey, John. This is John in Birmingham, part of your voiceover marketing podcast group on Facebook. And I want to let you know that I really enjoyed that interview or that podcast on uh, the wall drug, the story and, and all the history behind that. It's really very good. I really enjoyed that. And it really inspired me. Uh, I listened to it twice, and uh, real good stuff. Thanks, and keep up the great work. And thanks for including me on the, uh, the podcast Facebook group. And that's marketing. It's one of those things that I'm always trying to do better at. It's always a challenge, especially when you're a radio guy or you're a radio production guy like uh, you are, I guess, and like I am. So appreciate the uh, podcast, and keep up the great work. Thanks, man. See you soon. Well, thank you, John. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to send me that message. And for anybody who wants to know how John sent me that message, and John, by the way, great voice, man. What he did was he used the speak pipe option at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. You go to that page. 
there's an orange button on the right side of the screen and you click on it, you enter your email address, and then you use the microphone in your studio or on your smartphone or whatever to leave me a message. It's totally free. I would love to hear from you. And John, to your point about the wall drug story, that was episode 25. If people haven't listened to that, that is been, has been getting a lot of downloads and a lot of reaction to the story of wall drug and the title for the episode is how to get 20,000 customers a day with free ice water and it's an amazing story of how this little drug store in the middle of South Dakota has turned from this small small town into a, a destination and an attraction and they did it by finding a need and serving people and that's really what all businesses are about and something that I discussed toward the end of that episode was the importance of marketing our products and services and how marketing our products and services in fact helps others. And when we don't market our products and services, we're actually hurting society. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about that. Think about what happens when you get a voiceover gig. Now, this doesn't happen necessarily in all instances, but these are some of the things that can happen. Uh, you know, if you've got an agent, they're going to make money. So they benefit from marketing your products and services. If you use vendors, let's say you do audiobooks, you create your own audiobooks. Do you use a graphic artist to design the cover art? This podcast. There's artwork that's for the podcast. You know, my little Mike the Microphone, Michael Stribling is an artist, a fantastically talented artist. He does comic books and all kinds of other things. I'm friends with him on Facebook, but he was a vendor. I paid him to design Mike the Microphone. I had someone design the graphics for voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. The web hosting company, they make revenue from hosting the podcast page and my other website, johnmelly.com. Think about all the people who get money from you. Believe it or not, I have clients who like to have CDs made. I produce CDs for them. So I have an artist that works on the CD artwork. I have a company that does the duplication of the CDs for me. The shipping company, you know, UPS or the U.S. Mail. In economics, this is known as the multiplier effect. And... Of course, the client benefits the most because we're helping them further their goals and objectives. So if people don't know that we're able to help them, then we're doing them a disservice because they have to continue looking for an answer to their problem. They're looking for solutions. They're looking for vendors. You know, if we could do everything ourselves, we wouldn't have an economy. I, you know, I've talked about this before. I had a friend, a college buddy of mine, who used to change his oil for his car. He used to drain the oil from his own car. He put it up on, you know, those little ramps, you know, that you can put under your tires and all that kind of stuff. And he asked me, he said, "Why don't Why don't you do this?" And I'm like, "I, I don't want to." Number one, and it would take him a few hours on a Saturday. And there were a lot of other things that I wanted to be doing on a Saturday than lying underneath my car with a, a wrench taking off the oil filter and pulling out the oil, the nut at the, you know, in the oil pan to drain the whole thing. Put it, you know, I mean, I've seen it done, <laughs> but I don't want to do it. I want to pay somebody else to do it, you know? So when we, we market our products and services, we're doing the world a service. A lot of people look at marketing as a bad thing. It's not. It's, we have to do it. If you don't think you're in sales and you're trying to run a business, you need to rethink that. We're all selling something all the time, whether it's a position, a point of view, whether, you know, when you were a kid and you wanted to borrow the keys to the car, you were selling mom or dad who had the keys, hey, can I borrow the keys? Sometimes it was an easy sale. Sometimes it wasn't an easy sale. You had to overcome objections. You needed to have the client in the right frame of mind. A lot of people ask me um, how radio advertising works. And one question I ask is, 
how many impressions, how many, how, how big a buy are you going to make? And a question that I ask a client is, and the salespeople hate this question. I'm letting you in on this. They hate it. But it's a valid question. What's the last radio commercial you heard today? And I wait. And frequently, there's a puzzled look on their face and pause and silence. And the salesperson is squirming like, oh, gosh, John, why did you ask that question? And I, need, I did it because I, wanna, I want them to understand the point of view that a listener to the commercial is going to have. Everybody's listening to one radio station all the time. W-I-I-F-M. And that stands for What's In It For Me. We're always listening to that radio station. Why does this matter to me? So after a brief, (laughs) uncomfortable pause where they can't really, sometimes they give me an answer. But 90% of the time they can't think of anything. And after, you know, that uncomfortable moment sits for a little bit, I, I let them up off the mat and I say, okay, if I asked you where you could get a new mattress, what would you say? And frequently they'll give me any number of advertisers that advertise regularly. And so what I do is I point out to them that not everyone is in the market for a new mattress all the time. You know, there's this moving picture, there's this uh, level of awareness that takes place. The target customer moves from, you know, day to day. People need a new mattress for any number of reasons. You know, maybe the, the one they have is lumpy and it's 10, 15, however old it is. And they're like, you know what, we need to get a new mattress. Well, as soon as that happens, as soon as the person says, you know what, I need to get a new mattress, then their level of awareness goes up. And they move into the target market of people seeking a new mattress. And the way radio advertising works is that if your message happens to come along at the right time, they go, oh, maybe I ought to go to ABC Mattress Company. Do you see how that works? I mentioned it in the last episode, too, about, you know, if you're getting if you get a new car or you're thinking about getting a new car, when you're driving around, you're looking around, you're noticing, oh, I kind of like that one. What's that make and model? And then once you settle in on a make and model, you may not have noticed them before, but as soon as your interest level goes up on that particular make and model, you see that car everywhere. That's the level of awareness. So our marketing needs to be consistent. And we're actually doing everybody a disservice when we're not marketing, when we're not promoting ourselves. I mentioned a few vendors, you know, but I mean, think about it. Printers, duplicators, artists, agents, accountants, if you have an accountant, lawyers, office supplies, web hosting companies. You know, the number of people that benefit from your microeconomy is quite a number of them. A couple of years ago, I wrote... um, in a newsletter that I was sending out, the gratitude issue. And I did that around Thanksgiving. And I went through all the people who had given me money, all my clients for the year, and all the people who supported me in being able to provide those services. And I listed them all. I listed all my clients. I listed my attorney. I listed my accountant. I listed my agent. I listed the different vendors that's a great exercise for you to do. I'm speaking and extemporaneously right now, I, but take a moment. Here's a here's something for you to do. If you want a concrete example or an activity, a lot of people say, hey, what can I do? Look at who you give money to and look at who gives money to you. And there is a whole marketplace right in there that you can work with. And you'd be amazed at how you could put together a quick newsletter. November is coming. You know, Thanksgiving is next month. Start thinking about it now. Start compiling all the people who help you in your business. If you've got a voiceover coach or whatever, this is the type of thing. People love to be acknowledged because we're not. Most of us, you know. 
that's why that's why award shows are so important and why people love to watch them and participate in them and we root for people you know it's interesting so shift the thinking on marketing there's nothing wrong with marketing and promoting yourself you know you need to be able to back up what you're selling that goes without saying and if you're hesitating on your abilities and you need to realistically look at that as you know there we're creative people and you know, we can be our harshest critics. But, I mean, are those criticisms, those self-criticisms well-founded? Get an objective opinion. Work with a coach. Say, hey, you know, what do you think about this? But if they're saying, hey, man, hey, you're ready to go, then you got to trust that at some level and get out there, you know? There's a lot of influences in our culture that say money is bad. Money's not bad. Money's just a tool. Money doesn't care who owns it. It's what you do with that tool. It's what it allows you to be able to do. And so if you want to earn an income, market your products and services, and then you can do with it what you want. That gives you freedom. And that's what we're really looking for, right? Doing the things we want to do in our life. That's what I talk about at the beginning of each episode. I'm still working on that. This podcast has taken me in a lot of neat directions and uh, looking forward to growing it and growing it and growing it and offering more and more resources to everyone and helping everybody along the way. I think it's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. A couple of other things I just wanted to talk about really quickly. So Chris Voice posted this on the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast group on Facebook. And he said he had a client he'd been doing a lot of work for, and he'd been recording a long program every week for him for about nine months. And he thought everything was great. And then the client out of nowhere sends an email complaining about the recordings. And there'd been no feedback up to this point. But, you know, he's wondering if the client had been listening to them, wanting to know how to handle the client. And we got a lot of great comments. And one of the things that I mentioned to Chris was that I had said that I put in my agreements, there's a time period within which the client needs to approve the work. And if the project's not complete and it hasn't been approved within that time period, my agreements include language that says that the project will be placed in quote unquote inactive status. And I let them know about a week before it goes on inactive status as a reminder. And that if they want to resume the project after it's been inactive, I reserve the right to charge a reactivation fee. I put it all in writing in my professional services agreement. It's help. It does a number of things. One is it helps keep clients on a timeline. And it's really a hassle to have an unfinished project hanging over your head. I've been there. I, I, there are a couple of projects that were started a couple of years ago. And I've emailed the clients. And I'm like, what gives? And they don't get back to you. And it's still this little, like, like a dust ball in the back of your brain saying, Ugh, yeah, you know, let's just clean this up. That's just who I am. Another thing that I would recommend is, uh, you know, I was thinking about Chris's post, and I would make this recommendation to everybody. If you haven't already done so, pick up Rob Siglin Paglia's book, Voice Over Legal. I got a copy of it. It's, it's a valuable tool. And I have an affiliate link for you if you would like to get it. If you go to voiceovermarketingpodcast.com, I'll put a link in the show notes in this episode to his book. It's an affiliate link. The podcast will make a commission if you buy it through this link. It also, will, you'll save five bucks at checkout. So if you just go, go to the show notes, click on the link, and at checkout, enter the promo code V as in voice, M as in marketing, P as in podcast. That's VMP. At checkout, you're going to save five bucks off the cost of the book and the, the podcast, the voiceover marketing podcast, will earn a, a small commission. That would be great. But if you haven't already bought this book, Rob Siglin Paglia's book, and I know he's working on another one. We interviewed Rob in episode 23, How to Protect Yourself Legally in VoiceOver. Um, but if you haven't picked up that book yet, click the link in the show notes and enter the promo code VMP. I think depending upon what version of the book you get, it's either 15 bucks or 24 bucks. Folks, that's a small investment to keep you in pretty good shape, you know. 
think about <laughs> think about what could happen and how expensive that would be. This is just a little bit of insurance. I've read it. I've used it. There's there's great information in there. So if you haven't picked up that book, do it. End of pitch. It's a pitch with your best interests at heart. Getting close to wrapping up this episode, uh, I have a survey. I would love to know how you listen to the podcast. Do you listen to the podcast on the website, through a computer, you know, laptop, desktop, whatever, Mac? Or do you listen through your smartphone? And how do you get that information? It's a one-question survey. I have it pinned to the top of the feed in the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast group in Facebook. If you haven't signed up there yet, please do. I'd love to meet you. And again, take a selfie of you listening to this episode. And we'll post it on the on the thing. We'll put it on the Facebook group. We'll put it on Twitter. And it'll be a great way for everybody to kind of see who you are, especially my international listeners. Marion Bouquet, you're in France. I want a picture of you in France. I want to see in Paris. Are you in Paris? I want that. JP Sharma, I know you're out there. Let's send us a picture. Your picture has a picture of you holding a camera. I want a picture. Send us your pictures. Where are you? Where are you listening to this podcast? I'd love that. That would be so fun. Anyway, got some neat stuff coming up in future episodes. Uh, I've talked a lot about creating your own products and services, and I have been in conversations with Joe Bevilacqua, who has made a career out of creating his own products and services using his voice and production talents, and we're going to be talking to him. And I'm looking forward to that conversation. That will be the next episode of the podcast. Until then, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate all your comments and feedback. And if there's something you want to hear that we haven't covered, let me know. We're going to try and make this as as useful to you as possible. Thanks again. I'll talk to you next week. Our program originates in the Boston studios. We hope you'll join us again. Until then, we bid you au revoir, keep your chin up, and the best of luck. Well, that's it for this episode of the VoiceOver Marketing Podcast. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to it at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com so you'll get notices of new episodes. And please share it with your friends and colleagues in the voiceover world. Also, it would be a huge help if you'd like this podcast and rate it on iTunes to help keep it near the top of the list. Feel free to share your comments and questions about this episode and future topics you'd like discussed at voiceovermarketingpodcast.com. And if you'd like more information on one-on-one coaching with me and mastermind group opportunities where we focus on growing your business, feel free to drop me a line at my cyber assistance email address at mike at johnmelly.com. Thanks for listening. Now go out there and share your voice with the world.